Hey everyone, welcome back to Bookmas. I cannot believe we're in double digits. That means there's only two more videos after you guys are seeing this one, which is just so insane. But happy December 10th whenever you are watching this. This video is going to be all about the books that I love this year. I'm doing 24 for 2024. So I know the video before this should have been my 25 books I want to read in 2025, but let's talk about the 24 books I'm glad I read in 2024. For the lighting, I was trying to figure it out, but I seriously could not, like, I don't know. It's weird, but we're just going to deal with it. Also, I love filming like this. It's so cozy. I wish you, I do wish you guys could see my bookshelf more. Eventually, I would love to have, like, how um I, i'm forgetting her name but her name's katie she her bookshelf like setup is so gorgeous and eventually i'd love to have that but that is a divergence let's talk about the 24 of 2024. first book i want to talk about is the wall of winnipeg in me by mariana or mariana sabaka this book guys so good i think i discovered one of my new favorite authors at I'm not gonna talk about it yet. I'm gonna be doing the 2024 book tag where I talk about all of that <laughs> that stuff, but I love this book. Five stars. Aiden Graves was awesome. I did like kind of hate him at the beginning. I just like didn't really understand his like what his problem was, but as the novel continued, I was I was just obsessed with that man, and I loved our main character, Muffin. <laughs> Just kidding, sorry. While we're talking about this book, we should also talk about All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Safata. This book is probably my favorite book that I've read from her so far. I've only read the two, but this one right here, like this is a six star book. The slow burn is so good. Tobias Rhodes, oh my gosh, shut up. The like found family in this novel is so freaking good. And if I personally think if you're starting or if you're looking to start, with one of her books, I would start with this, but of course that's based on my own personal experience. But guys, this is the best slow burn ever. I didn't realize how much I love slow burns until Mariana Zapata. Like, give me all the angst, give me the pining, give me the stolen glances, give it to me, give it. Anyway, we're gonna change the tune and we're going to go to a poem book that I read by Frank O'Hara and it is called Lunch Poems. I actually need to figure out where my copy of this went because I know I lent it to someone and I'm now that I'm thinking about it, I'm curious if I ever got it back. But this book is really fast if you're looking for a poetry collection. His poems are so good. I think my all time favorite poem is within this collection. And if I had it, I would read it to you guys. But these are poems that he actually wrote on his lunch hour whenever he was working. And it's all just compiled into one collection and it's phenomenal. I always say I think Emily Dickinson is my favorite American poet, but I think Frank O'Hara is my favorite American male poet, maybe? Because there has to be some sort of categorization of, of him because he's amazing and I just, yeah, so good. Another book that I want to talk about that's in the nonfiction realm is Finding Me by Viola Davis. This book, guys, oh my gosh, I listened to it, which I would recommend. I'm pretty sure she read it. I, I, in my Goodreads, I rated it like a six plus stars. I think it actually made me cry. And I think the last time I cried to an audiobook was when I read Becoming by Michelle Obama. And so Viola Davis's um, memoir is probably like my highest recommended memoir. Like if you're looking to get into reading one, start with hers, like... It is amazing. I, think I have to talk about this book, even though I, I did read it for class. N.K. Jemisin's The Fifth Season was so amazing. I think it was probably one of the best books that I've ever had assigned for a class. It is a science fiction slash fantasy. I would say it probably leans more fantasy. And I wish more people talked about it. It's part of the Broken Earth trilogy, I'm pretty sure which I would love to finish out the series, reread the first one and then read all the rest uh, to like fully be immersed in the world. But it is definitely like a critique on social, social elements like racism and capitalism and all of these other things. But it was so freaking good. I remember reading it and thinking like, oh, this is gonna suck. Like I have to read a full novel for class. But then as I was reading it, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe there's not more. Like it was genuinely giving me like a visceral reaction. 
and I love it. If you're looking for a science, science fiction slash fantasy recommendation from this video, this is one you should put on your 2025 TBR. Okay, of course we have to talk about Bunny Story by Emily Henry. Her books will probably always be on my top books that I've read. This was a five star. It's definitely not my favorite that I've read from her, but I did really like it. I thought the trope was really interesting and I thought it was a really unique way of doing it, of setting up these two characters together. I will say, I don't, I was not attracted to the like descriptions of the male character. I kind of created him in my own mind, but like the crock wearing and like the weed smell, like the thick weed smell, like personally that's not my, my taste, but it was completely fine. Like I re, I like honestly rebranded him in my own mind and it was still like really good and really fun. And so, yes, I love this. So I feel like we have to talk about Ali Hazelwood. If we're going to talk about Emily Henry, we have to talk about Ali Hazelwood, one of my other favorite authors. And I think I read, I read three things by her this year, but two novels that I want to talk about. Um, the first being Check and Mate by, by Ali Hazelwood, obviously. This, I believe, is her first young adult fiction novel and it centers around chess which is a little bit of a deviation from a little bit of a deviation from the stem field oh i guess i actually read three books from from her that i would love to talk about but anyway check and mate was really good i thought the tension was really good i thought the conversations um surrounding the main character of like her having to step up was really good i did rate this four stars which i think this is the only ali hazelwood thing that i've rated less than four like five stars but honestly I feel like it's a five stars I just feel like she might be an automatic five stars like so good but anyway that one is like less steamy than her other ones and then I know that she you know I read Bride by her I'm pretty sure I read that this year let me double check and I read it at five stars guys I loved this I know some people like cannot get into this trope and I will say I'm not I would not say or claim I'm part of the Omegaverse, but this book was so good. I just am a fiend for like vampire, werewolf, anything to do with that. And the fact that it was a werewolf and vampire together, that's all I need to say. That's all I need to say. And that made me, we're going to diverge. We're going to talk about another book. That made me read The Fake Mate by Lana Ferguson. And oh my gosh, guys, this one was good too. I'm pretty sure I rated this one at four stars. But if you, if you like The Fake Mate, read Bride. If you liked Bride, read The Fake Mate. Because they go hand in hand together. They deal with like kind of the same vibe. But I did rate The Fake Mate four stars. I thought it was so fun and silly. And I liked the hospital-esque setting. I thought it was so cute. But anyway... I, I guess technically I have read two books that are part of the Omegaverse, but I would not say I'm a part of that verse. Like, I, there's some some things that I don't vibe with, but ultimately the thought of, like, <laughs> anyway, we're done. We're not, we're not, we're going to move on to the last Allie Hazelwood book that I want to include, and that is Not In Love, I'm pretty sure. Rated this one five stars. I do think Allie Hazelwood has come out with, like, a disclaimer that this book is heavily smutted <laughs> i just made up with that it, it relies on the physical element of a relationship before an emotional connection is established and i know some people don't like that but i think sometimes that's real life and sometimes things like that happen and so i honestly liked it and i liked the like i ali hazelwood always adds like a little bit extra plot and sometimes it's not very believable <laughs> I'll say but sometimes it's really fun and this one I thought was like yes it verges on being like mm, that probably wouldn't happen but it could happen and let's see how these characters deal with it which I thought was really interesting and I liked that the male character was a really good cook I thought that was awesome I believe we're at 10 so we have 14 more books which is pretty exciting um, the next one I want to talk about is one that I also had to read for class and that is beloved by Toni Morrison this book is, it's amazing. Toni Morrison is a phenomenal writer. Like she is well known for a reason. 
and I thought this book was so good. It was my second book that I've read by her. And honestly, I think it's my favorite book. I read this one and then The Song of Solomon. But I think Beloved, um, it's it comes from like kind of like a science fiction fantasy realm. And it deals with ghosts and haunting, kind of a gothic trope. But it talks about slavery, the aftermaths of slavery, coping with being a slave. And it focuses on a woman and her dead daughter, Beloved. And I thought it was really interesting and I don't want to like say too much because I would love for you guys to read it and figure out like the plot on your own without spoiling it. But if you're looking for a heavier like subject matter but something that is still easy to read and something you'll enjoy, I would definitely recommend reading this. I think everyone should read it personally but I know not everyone will which I just think is so sad because this book needs to be read have to talk about this book because I enjoyed it so much which is so crazy it's like it's an indie published Kindle Unlimited book and that is The Wraith King I got this rec from Heather McLary here on YouTube and guys this book was everything and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a series which I'm so excited about I rated it a solid four stars I had so much I had so much fun reading this just like Kind of like they're they're supposed to be enemies, but then you know you can tell that there's tension, and it's kind of giving like captor and captive, but like it's maybe giving Stockholm syndrome, but like better. Um, but anyway, I thought it was so good, and there was a betrayal in this, which I always love a good betrayal, and there's a quest that they have to complete, and I think I think it could end how it ended but I, I think there's going to be more which I'm very excited about whether that's continuing the couple or talking about other characters in the series I'm really excited. I have to talk about this novella that I read and that is called The Deal of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman and this is my second book that I have read by him and I actually found it in a little library at a coffee shop read it in one sitting while I was drinking my coffee and then put it back and I rated it four stars. It was so beautiful. I'm pretty sure it was, yes, it's about this older man and this younger girl who is having to try to beat cancer. And it's just like, oh, I just, I'm actually getting chills thinking about it. I thought, I just think the messages of his books are so, so important. And like, they hit you in your gut and his writing is so beautiful, which I'm pretty sure it's translated fiction. I could be wrong. But I think it might be translated, which I think is so incredible because I feel like just in a in a normal, typical way, sometimes meaning or words get wrongly transcribed or they're lost in translation. And I feel like there's like these things are just so beautiful. I've read one other novella by him, and that is In Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer. And that one was also just like, I think it made me cry. I rated it five stars. And I'm like, I cannot wait to read more of his work because he truly is a phenomenal author. Anyway, we are going to talk about House of Flame and Shadow because although this did kind of disappoint me, I rated it a 4 stars, or honestly it might be even like a 3.75, it let me down but I still like enjoyed it. I thought the story was good, it didn't meet my expectations and I thought some things were like, what? But then others, I was like, okay, yes, 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 okay. But I just felt like the characters had such like it, they were so different at the at the, the conclusion of this novel. And I, I'm pretty sure this series isn't finished. I'm pretty sure it's still ongoing. But I feel like with Bryce and, Bryce and Hunt, I'm not really sure where the relationship is supposed to go. So still dealing with like that. But we'll see. I mean... We'll see. The book that I read this this year was Love Design by Lauren Asher and this was the first book in the Lakefront Billionaire ser series and I'm really upset that I haven't continued the series because I'm pretty sure the second and maybe even the third book are out right now or maybe the third book is the third book is coming out in May and I'm like oh I need to get on it. It was published in June so a while ago. But anyway, I really enjoyed this. I love the setting of Lake Wisteria and I love how they're all kind of interconnected. I just love that it's like a, a multiverse type of vibe. 
but um, yeah, this followed two characters who are redesigning a home together, and I think, I think they dated and then they broke up. I feel like that's true. Frenemies is what they are, um, but I mean, you guys know what happens eventually, and I just loved it. I thought it was so fun. I think Lauren Asher, Asher's writing is super fun, and I just really liked this series, and I'm excited to continue reading more from her. I can't believe I missed this. I have to talk about this because I know I said Viola Davis's memoir was my favorite and I do think that's true but also Down the Drain by Julia Fox. Guys this book was crazy in like the best way. Five stars. It was the best listening experience. She pretty sure she read it. I read it I think in two sittings which is crazy. Usually an audiobook for me I read in like multiple sessions but this I like I could not stop reading it and, or listening to it technically but she lived a crazy life and I think her message that she's trying to present at the end of the novel or it's not a novel I think the message she's trying to present throughout her own story is really important and I honestly became a fan of her after this before this I was just kind of like yeah Julia Fox like didn't really think that much about her like yeah she did Kanye West and then that was it but after reading this, I'm like, I'm actually kind of inspired by you in very loose terms. Like, if you read this and you're like, what? Very loose, but just the fact that she's a woman who has created a name for herself and she loves her child so much and, like, her child saved her life. I think that's so, like, heartwarming and I think it explains a lot about the media surrounding Julia Fox and I think everybody should read it before they say anything about her or try to judge her or place standards on her. I think you should read this. We're on our last eight. I want to talk about another memoir that I listened to and that is Educated by Tara Westover. I thought this was really great. This was actually a common book for KU. I think my freshman year of college and I finally read it this past year and I think her story is so important and it's obviously about getting educated and and coming from a family that's abusive in so many different ways I think this is another really important memoir and it's like some people write them and you're kind of like what's like I loved listening to this I loved reading this it's really cool but what's your point and Westover's point is how important education is and I think that's really awesome and I think it was a really good choice for KU to choose that book as common book I really really enjoyed that one and if you guys are looking for like listening listening books or audio, listening books if you guys are looking for audiobooks add those three audiobooks that i told you to add because you'll go through them so quickly i feel like i also have to talk about magnolia park's the long way home i think i might have rated this one five stars yeah i rated it five stars and i'm pretty sure this this one i'm it, like this series gives me like a gut-wrenching heart-wrenching like feeling whenever i read it i will say I don't think Jessa Hastings writing is anything like spectacular. I do think her quotes can sometimes be good, but if if you're looking for like very lyrical, like perfect grammar, perfect spelling, sequential stuff, you might not get that, which sounds disparaging, but her stories and her characters are just so interesting to follow that it's hard not to want to read them or continue reading them. I mean, I have the five books on my shelf for a reread of the first three and then I want to read the last two which I one is like 800 or 900 pages and I did not know that so I'm scared but anyway I thought this book was I just think this book is really good yeah that's all I really had to say but I feel like this list would be incomplete without talking about it I have to talk about Romeo and Juliet I have never read Romeo and Juliet obviously I've seen it and I've seen adaptations of it but I've never actually read read the, the play which to me is crazy that was never assigned to me in high school but I finally read it for my thesis and I rated it five stars I thought it was beautiful it's it was so cool to see like the origin story of the like all the adaptations I've seen I guess but I did really enjoy this and yeah another book I really enjoyed was the prisoner's throne which is the second book in the duology of the stolen heir which is a part of the um, Elfame, or I'm forgetting what the like interconnected series is. I mean, you guys know, whoa, I feel like the, it just got really dark in here, so sorry about that. 
But you guys know what I'm talking about with Cardin and June. Is it Elfame? The Cruel Prince trilogy? Anyway, this is this follows Oak and I love the first book. The second book did like I didn't love it as much as I loved the first book in the duology, but I still really, really enjoyed it. And I think I rated it four stars. No, I rated it five stars. So I did really enjoy it. I just love the tropes in fantasy where you get a little tinge of betrayal and untrust and, or distrust. I love that tension. So I will read all of those books. I read One Dark Window, which is a gothic like fantasy novel i would say it is a duology which i haven't read the second book which i need to i had to actually soft dnf it because i was not getting through it but this book is about elspeth who has like a monster in her head and it is surrounding these like cards which it kind of reminded me of caraval and the fates and like the card the deck of cards but this is a little bit different and these cards give you magical powers and anyone who is afflicted, I think, is influenced by the cards. I could be wrong because it's been a while since I've read it. But Elspeth is afflicted and she forms like a alliance with the king's son, I think. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's the king's son. And his goal is to like eliminate these people. But they actually are falling in love, obviously. And they're trying to do something a little bit more something else is going on. So I did really enjoy this one. The play I want to talk about is uh, A Midsummer's Night Dream by William Shakespeare. I did not know I liked Shakespeare. Smear? <laughs> I did not know I liked Shakespeare as much as I did until I read this book or this play. It was so funny and they're so quick guys. I know the language is a little bit harder to understand which if you are having a hard time I would recommend listening and then um and then like reading along with it because it'll go so 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 quick like if you need some books to add to your tbr to finish before 2024 ends read these two plays listen to them read it go. it'll be awesome and this one's funny so recommend this one. book that i liked which i'll just do both of the books is the dracula dracula duet by karina how hale um I think I rated the first one four stars and then the second one third stars, but this is about reincarnated lovers and vampires and everything fantasy realm. I mean, it's the Dracula duet. The main character is supposed to be loosely based off of, um, of Dracula. Like, he's supposed to be the vampire who inspired Rom Stoker to write Dracula, if that makes sense, in this world which I thought was really fun, um, but you just learned that he's kind of like nerdy and not a bad guy. And we have a witch hunter who is there to kill him. Um, and I think it's so good. And I, that's all I'm gonna say, it's so, so good. And I've never read A Reincarnated Love until this one. And I'm obsessed, that's all I have to say. I think that was 24, I'm pretty sure that was my last book. Sorry, the lighting is so weird in here, but I am gonna end this video also, sorry that I was a little bit lower energy. I am feeling a tad bit sick, if you can't tell, but I still wanted to make sure I'm posting all 12 days of book myths. I'm so excited. I can't believe we're so close to being done. But yeah, I hope everyone's had a wonderful first 10 days of December. The rest of December treats you guys well. See you in tomorrow's video. Peace and love. Bye, guys.